Oh, this is a dub, yeah. yeah. I said, I'd save your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I said, because I love her more than all three of you put together. Yeah. You might say, man, that's me. <laughs> I, do. I love her more than all three of you. Amen. And I love the Lord more than I love her. He has never left. Beth has never left. But he has never left in all my trouble. He knows me. Remember, he knows my thoughts. He knows my words. He knows my heart, my desires, whether they're right or wrong. And he's never left. Well, that's good. Amen. Well, that's a comfort during trials and testing in our life. Then Jesus is coming back. We want to look at those verses there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Man, that's a great day as a preacher preached on this past Sunday. Well, that's a great comfort to say, hey, no matter what happens today, this is my hell on earth. This is the worst as it gets. But God still with you. Well, his presence is here. Amen. I, can, I can bank on His knowledge. I can bank on His sovereignty. I can bank on His promises. And then lastly, that will be a great comfort to you, I believe is that God's compassion or His love, as Eric spoke about Sunday morning. God's compassion. Look over back at Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Did you see, I didn't know my point. Psalms 139. <laughs> we'll see, first of all, God's compassion. We know that He is compassionate and He loves us because He hears us. Look at verse 1. It says, O oh Lord, now stop. You notice, this is a prayer. This is a prayer of David's. God is addressed six times in all 24 verses. Will it be, O oh God, or O oh Lord? He says six times he addresses the Lord directly. But then 26 times personal pronouns are in reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. That's 32 times that God addresses the Lord in 24 verses. That's more than one per verse. This is a prayer David. God hears us when we pray as well. Yes, he does. Amen. It don't matter if you're riding down the road and going through a trial. When I was coming back, I guess it's been five weeks ago, now six weeks, and I had heard about him. I was coming back all by myself, except for the Lord. Boy, I felt alone that night. Yeah. Sure. I felt all by myself. I felt scared. Boy, I, I just cried out to the Lord. I cried for yes, sir. probably an hour, just weeping. But you know what? I was talking to the Lord, and He heard everything I said. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then, I went to praise him. Sure. Turned from prayer, loneliness, and hey Lord, I love you more. I will trust you, Lord. Whatever happens, it happens. I said, Boy, you've been good this week. And I started thinking about how good he's been to me. I said, Boy, I've had it for 18 years. Boy, they've been some great years. Whatever happens, happens. I thank you, Father. Turned on Brother Hoyt. He started singing. <laughs> talking about that one of the songs he's talking about. Uh, who's that joke in the jail? They let go instead of Jesus. I forget his name all of a sudden. Barabbas. Barabbas. That song about Barabbas. I like that song. Because that was me and that was you. Yeah, you man. I started thinking about that. I said all that to say, hey, that was one time when I needed it. And I still need it. But. When I was going through a trial, boy, the Lord heard me on the highway, interstate. Mm -hmm. He'd hear you in a closet. He'd hear you walking down the street. He'd, the women washing dishes, washing clothes, working on a job. He'd hear you. Hears you wherever. That shows us that He loves us. Not only God hears us, but He understands us. Look at verse 2. It says, Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought far off. God's very understanding. He understands you. 
He knows how we work. He knows that we're uh, saved, but yet we're we still got this carnal fleshly body with us. He knows how we think. He understands us better than anybody. Well, that's a com uh, comfort to know that God still loves us, but He understands us. Then look at verse five. It says, "Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me." He holds us or touches us. Look at verse ten. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Yes, sir. Preacher shared with us Sunday about when he lost his grandpa, I think it was, and his cousin came out, put his hand, and just embraced him and let him cry on his shoulder. That's a great comfort. Yes, have someone sir. put the arm around and say, I love you. I'm praying for you. I care for you. I can tell you something better than a human doing that, or your yes, wife, sir. or your husband. You feel the presence of God put His arm around you. Absolutely. Say, I love you. Yes. yes. I care for you. I Amen. know what you're going through. Yes. I've been there. Amen. I've been there. Look at the next one. Verse, the next one is found in verse 17 and 18. He hears us, He understands us, He holds us, and then He thinks on us. He thinks on us. Look at verse 17. How precious, David says. Also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. I don't know how pieces of sand there are. You take that literal, I don't know. You ought to need to ask a preacher that. But it, I don't know. But I do know it says he thinks about me. And there's a bunch of times he thinks about me. Yeah. I don't know why he can take the time to think about me anyway. For him to think about me once would be more than I deserve. And twice would be even greater than I don't ever know. But he thinks about us. You know, I like to hear what my dad say, I've been thinking, son. And I find out he's been thinking about me. Yeah, that's nice. Well, that's, that's nice. Yes. As long as I don't do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm not fixing fix and get in trouble. But it's nice to know, you know, my dad was thinking about me. He took time out of his day. He has very little left to think about me. Our Father in heaven, he thinks about us. Well, that's a comfort. Not only that, look at verse 19 through 22. He delivers us. I like this part. 19. Surely, as that word again preached on about Sunday in Revelation 22, surely thou wilt slay the wicked. Amen. Oh God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak evil against the wicked, wickedly. Thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord? Sure. Yeah, I do. That hate thee. People say, oh, you're supposed to be love. You're supposed to have love, not supposed to hate. What about this verse? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. It goes to show right there, we can hate the enemies yes, of God. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We can. Those yeah. Bible correct? We can hate them. Yes, sir. They correct God's work. They're liars. They're trying yeah. to correct God. Yeah. Atheists, witches, whoever they are, Satanists, I don't know why. I hate them. They're enemies of God, it says. Yep. It says, I count them my enemies. They are. And therefore, God will deliver us. He delivered David. I read that verse over there in Psalms 23 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they not only that, the last one, not only does He hear us and He understands us, He holds us, He thinks on us, He delivers us, but then He leads us. Look at verse 24. Look at verse 23. Where are you to? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Yes, sir. God leads us. Amen. He leads us. Turn back over to Psalms 23.
Verses 1 through 3. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. Is He your shepherd? If He's not your shepherd, then He's not leading you. Amen. Amen. If He is your shepherd, He is trying to lead you. The question is, are you trying to find Him? Yeah. Come on. That's what we're prone to do as fleshly human beings to find Him. But He'll lead us if we let Him. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What more should you want than the Lord? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. And again, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Not the paths of wickedness. Not the paths of compromise. He leadeth in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He leads us. Therefore, no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what trouble, what trial, what testing, what sickness, what death is knocking at your door, the Lord's leading you. These six things have been a comfort in my life and continue to be a comfort as I battle things each week and each day in my life. God's presence is a tremendous comfort. God's knowledge is a tremendous comfort. God's sovereignty, God's promises, and then God's compassion is a real blessing. I hope that it will be a real blessing in your life. It won't be just because I preach this message, Joe. That's right. You'll have to get into this book. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the only way it will be. That means you might have to get off the computer. Yep. That means you might have to cut off the TV. It means you might have to be a little disciplined. Yes, sir, preacher. It takes discipline. It won't ever be a, a comfort to you. And you'll, you'll look back and say, I don't know what all them Christians are talking about all the time. That's because you never got in love with the book. That's right. right. You never even fall in love with him. You fell in love with a boy. You fell in love with a girl. Fell in love with all kinds of things in this world. You never fell in love with that book. That's right. I don't know about you, but I, I thirst for this book like David said. Boy, I desire it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. That's why I'm all the time reading and studying and printing things and and. and Look, ask the preacher for extra tapes and because I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I can't get enough of it. Amen. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that you won't have this peace and you won't have these comforts unless you fall in the love with this book and fall in love with the author of this book. Yeah. There's no way. The world can't provide it. All they can offer you is counterfeits. That's right. You've got to get in love with this book. And if you do, when you face troubles, you'll be comfortable. 